Let me tell you the funniest story. I just created the best screencast ever in my life, like the best thing ever. And what happened? I lost it. Uh, Pulse audio crashed and there was no audio at the end and I'm so pissed off. But I'm going to try again and this one's going to be better. So here we go. Um, I want to show you as quickly as possible how to get up on uh, the prismatic uh, Ethereum 2 beacon chain testnet. Uh, why would that matter? Ethereum 2 isn't out yet. Well, it matters because developers need participants to run nodes so that they can look for bugs and solve them before we try to go live. The more quickly these bugs are found, the more quickly they can be fixed and the closer we get to actual launch. Uh, so what I want to show you today is a few scripts and just go over a couple things in general, but I'm going to be very targeted on only getting the beacon chain running. That's all we care about. So you can run this on any kind of Ubuntu 18.04 machine, whether that's a desktop or a server, whether you're running it on an old, old hardware, uh, you should try it on a Raspberry Pi, we'll see. You can dual boot your Windows machine with Ubuntu. Um, you can try it on DigitalOcean. Any of those things should work. If they don't, let me know. I'll try to get them fixed. Uh, hey, one other thing. If you find a way to optimize my script and make it significantly better um, by both of our agreed judgment, then I'll be glad to send you $10 in die. Uh, and the better it is, the more it benefits everyone. The ultimate goal of today is going to be listed, is to get you listed on this eth2stats.io page developed by Alex, alith.io. Uh, you can see I have probably have a couple on here now. My super fizz green. Um, let's see. Well, a lot of my stuff might be down. Uh, but yeah, the ultimate goal is to be listed here. This is not all of the nodes on the Beacon Chain testnet. Uh, it is the people who opt in, and there are 38 people who have opted in. Uh, and I see, hey, look, cool guy fizz, cool guy fizz tried this. Um, Hands Harry fizz tried this. Uh, these are people who have used my script and have uh, offered to use or who have agreed to use uh, my suggestion to include Fizz, so we know that people are using this. If people use it, it means we'll improve it more. I'll stop talking and get along with this. Uh, so I want to go over these pages really quickly. Everything we're doing today is based on the Prismatic Labs Prism um, GitHub and build instructions, and we're using the Basil instructions. It also builds on Docker. I plan to do an instructional video for that, but we're doing the Basil build today. Um, nothing that I'm doing is uh, is improves on what Prismatic is putting out. All I'm doing is creating a script to build an environment to install this so that you don't have to figure out all the dependencies. You don't have to figure out how to make the environment work. All you have to do is run one simple script and it will work. Uh, we're going to run that script from here, github.com slash superfizz, super can't say my username, superfizz slash Prismatic Basil. And we're just going to run this one script, setup.sh, and it's going to do everything for us. If you have fun with that, if you get the beacon chain up and running, you might also want to launch a validator. You don't have to do both things. What we really need right now are beacon chain nodes. But if you get froggy and you want to launch a validator, uh, prylabs.net slash participate is a great place to start. These docs are very useful, and I plan to do a video based on those later, but I'm trying to get comfortable with creating videos now. I also hang out on this Discord channel uh, in the general room, so you might find me there. Um, and I want to talk about a testant. Uh, so this guy, JGM, is what I call him. Uh, at McD is his, um, is his GitHub name. He creates a lot of useful tools. He's also going to run a, uh, a staking service called Attestant that you should look out for. Um, and what he talks about here is how to run the beacon chain as a service on your server. It's just useful. You won't probably need it yet, uh, but it's just neat to check out. Uh, if you have questions about staking in general, please come visit us at our ETH staker. Uh, and my favorite place to be every day is in the ETH finance, reddit.com slash r slash ETH finance, uh, general daily discussion. This is where I live. Uh, I hope you'll come join us and say hello. Enough of that. Uh, let's get on with the build, and it is actually pretty simple. There are about six steps, and I'm going to do a few pauses in this video because there are going to be some delays, um, but really, I'm going to step through these steps real fast and show you how to get a beacon chain node up and running. I want to warn you in advance, it's not going to work. I mean, like, there's going to be crashes, and it's going to, like, suck, but um, it's a work in progress, and every time you reboot your machine, say you run it for a day or for a week, and you're like, hey... I noticed that I'm not showing up on ETH2Stats. Reboot your machine, it will pull a new image of the beacon chain, and um, there's a good chance it will fix any errors that, that uh, turned up and were fixed. 
So I'm going to install git first. And then I'm going to clone this repository. If you're pasting into a terminal, it's control shift V. So I cloned uh, github.com slash superfiz slash prismatic basil. And I'm going to cd into that. And I'm going to do a list just because it's what I do when I go in somewhere. Uh, and the only thing that's really important is this setup.setup.sh. And as soon as I run this, it's going to say, hey, you're not in the Docker group. So I created the Docker group. I added you to it. But now you need to reboot and relaunch this script. So I'm going to run sudo reboot. And before I hit that button, I'm going to pause this. Uh, my machine's going to reboot, and I will be back with you. My machine is rebooted, and I'm back where I left you. And I'm opening up a new terminal. Let's control alt T, or you can click down here and find terminal and click on it. It will open up. Um, and to get back where we were, uh, we have already installed Git. We've cloned the repository. We went to Prismatic Basil. We started the setup, but it needed to add us to a group. So now we're back at the main prompt, and I'm going to go back into the Prismatic repository. I always list. It's what I do. It's my habit. Uh, and now I need to relaunch that script. And this time it's going to ask me for my password. And so this is where I tell you that um, this is going to make some very deep system changes. They're not really deep system changes. It's going to, to create a file called RC local. It doesn't matter to you. But what it is going to do is every time you reboot, it's going to launch uh, those scripts in the background. So you don't have to worry about them. All you have to do is make sure your computer is up and running. Um, and there's, I'd say, a pretty good chance that those scripts are are running just fine in the background. Um, now, we're learning, so I want you to go in there and, and look at them and see what they're doing. Um, but the point of, of booting them on or launching those scripts on boot is so that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so let's say, like, you noticed that you fell off eth2stats.io. You just reboot, and everything should be restart. Um, it will pull the latest image of Prismatic, rebuild it, um, and hopefully get you up and running. This is going to take a long time to run, so I'm going to pause the video, um, and I'll be back with you in a minute. Hey, but before I do, I want to I want to talk about some of the things, some of the people who have encouraged me to do well on this. Um, my biggest influence lately is where does it seems is Austin Griffith. Um, he produces these really high quality instructional videos that are just stream of consciousness of him doing something, and I've learned more from those than anyone. And and the fact that he just iterates and just keeps going and going, um, it really encourages me to continue producing content. Um, I'd also like to thank all the people who support me at eFinance and encourage me to keep working on this stuff. Um, and all of the people at Prismatic who are just developing an awesome product. Now I'm playing with all of the valid, or I'm sorry, all of the Beacon Chain clients, um, but Prismatic is, is definitely uh, the one that I feel most comfortable with right now. So I'm going to pause the video. When this is done, I'll be back and we will see what we've got. All right, my script is finished running. And you see a couple notes. Um, basic setup is done. Nothing is happening, but it's happening in the background. Um, you can copy this message, uh, this raw transaction data, and start your validator. Um, don't do that yet because it's going to take a long time for your chain to sync. And that data is actually stored in a folder in your home directory. I'm not worried about that right now. Um, so the important thing is I want to show you how to use screen because I don't assume that you already know. So screen is a command that... Sorry, I was doing uh, baby bottles, and then I ran back to finish this. Let me breathe a minute. I'm, I'm actually going to breathe a minute. Hold on. Screen is a command that lets you run terminal screens in the background. So right now, there's a screen session running in the background for validator and for beacon screen. We can look at that um, with, well, let's begin by seeing a list with screen-ls. That will list all of the screen sessions, just like you see it above. And we have two screen sessions. Uh, to enter those, all you have to do is type screen dash X and the first couple letters of the screen you want to see, and then tab. Tab will complete it. You can actually type this number too, the process number, but I always type the name uh, if I've named a screen. So when I enter this, you're not going to see anything awesome. Oh, wow, look at that. We've picked up. Um, what we see right now is um, <laughs> 828 hours to sync uh, the beacon chain. That is not accurate right now. That's based on having just five peers. As you collect peers, as you continue to sync the chain, it'll go much faster. You're getting, I'm getting 0 0.01 blocks per second, uh, per second right now, 
uh, and normally you can expect to see anywhere between four and ten. This is funny because lately, uh, as I've been running this, it's just been stalling out and crashing. So it's fantastic that we're actually seeing a sync right now. Uh, and so you can see this time falling dramatically from 800 hours to 14 hours to 13 hours, 12. So we are syncing very quickly right now in, in the background. Now to exit this screen session, I'm gonna hold the control key and type A and D. And now I'm back at the main screen. Uh, if I reboot, I'm gonna, and I go to a regular terminal, it's gonna look like a regular terminal, but I can do screen dash LS there. I'll see that I have the screen sessions. I can enter them. I'm actually gonna open the validator right now just for giggles. I can see the validator is running. It's actually asking me to create a new password. If you decide to create a validator, you can do all of this. I'm not gonna show you that in this video. Uh, and I type control AD to go back to this screen. Um, so the last thing that I wanna show you is how to get listed on ETH2 stats. Um, and th this is really a big deal. This is how we know how many people are participating in the network. There's no direct count. So this 39 tells me there are 39 people who have opted in to share their stats. Uh, and to modify that, to change your name over here, because you know you want it to say whatever, FFGG or whatever you want it to say, we need to modify a script called ETH2STATS. Uh, let me, actually, I always begin with a list. That's the list long. Uh, I, it's a new one to me, but I use it a lot now. Uh, so I need to modify this script called ETH2STATS.SH. Uh, and really, I, tab completion I use for everything. So if Docker isn't installed, skip that. It's already installed. This script will automatically kill itself and relaunch every time, so it kills the old Docker process, brings a new Docker process, and restarts it. And to change the name, we change this uh, line right here, ETH2 stats node name, and I'm going to call it um, JT Nickel. And uh, I would ask, if you're doing this, to add a PHZ in there. Uh, and that lets people who are seeing this know, hey, uh, they use PhysiScript. There's a couple down here. Um, and that encourages me to keep working on this stuff. Um, and it kind of provides some um, validation that uh, the script is getting out there and working. So when I'm done with this, I can type Control X to save, yes, and enter. And now I have to run the script, so I'm going to type dot slash eth2stats.sh and enter. It's going to kill the existing version, it's going to pull the new version, and it's going to relaunch it. So uh, in a little while, actually it should be pretty soon, you're going to see JT Nickel dash fizz show up here. I know that because it is syncing pretty fast, so we should get that here in a moment. Um, it'll be at the bottom because it just started. Uh, and it may not. At any rate, um, what we've done today is we have looked at the Ethereum 2 Prismatic Beacon Chain, val uh, beacon chain um, on the testnet. We reviewed where you can find that from Prismatic. I showed you my GitHub repository and a script that I use to set that up with kind of a one-click setup. Uh, there's JT Nickel dash Fizz. Uh, so Again, when you shut the machine down and reboot it, it's still going to be there. When you're done with all of this, just wipe the drive. Um, this script should be good for a month, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep updating it. So um, if you're into February or March, well, no, sorry. If you're into March, because February is pretty soon, uh, then you should look for an updated version of this. Also, if you check out on my, um, on my GitHub, I am going to start organizing my YouTube videos here. Um, these are the older versions of this, and I'm going to add the new one up here um, so that I get this the, the best version I can every time. Uh, thanks for listening, and um, I hope you'll provide positive feedback if it worked for you, and if not, some, some other feedback. I'm not sure if I've said this or not, but if you provide, uh, if you improve my script with a pull request on GitHub, um, and it significantly improves what I'm doing, um, then I'll be glad to send you uh, 10 die uh, as, a, as a token of appreciation. So I hope you'll look at that. Just look at the script, find something to improve, uh, and I'll shoot you some die. All right, thanks for your time.